The Golden Globe saw stars wearing black on the red carpet in support of the fight against sexual harassment. But during Sunday's Grammys, attendees elected to wear white roses. Dozens of artists from Pink to Sam Smith put white roses on their elaborate dresses and tuxedos in support of the Time's Up movement. But the show's political commentary went even further, with Hillary Clinton making an appearance in a comedy sketch about the Trump expose Fire and Fury. Artists also used the show's global platform to speak out on race and immigration issues. Entertainment Tonight co-host Kevin Frazier has more on the night's biggest moments. What's Kevin, up? you're here with us. I Always know, good to be here with you. Well, neither did you. <laughs> I know. Come on, let's, go, let's be and honest. And both of you guys looking fantastic. No oh, worse for wear, thank worse you. For wear at I can all. never compete with this guy, but um, I, I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so it was definitely sort of a powerhouse show, and, and politics, I think, sort of was front and center. Kesha's performance. Yes. I mean, it almost sort of brought tears to my eyes. This has been quite a journey for her to see her on stage belting out those words, surrounded by all of those women. Just talk about how significant that performance was. It was the moment, in my opinion, of the night. Inside that arena, it felt like she sucked the air out of the place and you struggled along with her through every single word. Yeah. The tears and the emotion of her, um, of her performance. But I will tell you this, afterwards, she walked backstage and you could see she was hugging all the women when the lights went down. But when she went backstage, she let out a scream mm. that I, it didn't make the broadcast, but it was so loud that it did catch. You could see Camila Cabello, who was out there talk, uh, speaking mm -hmm. about the dreamers. You could see it made her kind of like, whoa, what was that? Mm. It was Kesha screaming at the top of her lungs, and it was like an exhale moment. I think that this moment changed forever how America looks at Kesha, how the world world looks mm -hmm. at Kesha as a performer, not the crazy girl from TikTok or right. all the allegations and all the things that Can she was dealing with. Can you remind people Dr. what her story is? Because people might not remember. Sure. Kesha was an artist who, uh, fun was her, her the name of her game. And uh, she had a TV show showing some of her wild antics. And, you know, her first big hit, TikTok, was just a party anthem. Right. So now I think that everyone looks at her as uh, someone who has grown into a woman who has texture and maturity. And so that was an important moment for her. And those other women there around her, surrounding her, Cindy Lauper told us on the red carpet, she just didn't want to cry, but it was one of the most powerful moments of her career. Wow. It was a powerful moment indeed. Another moment that has a lot of people talking this morning and also in the minutes after it aired, uh, again, not shying away from politics, it was Hillary Clinton, oh uh, her cameo appearance in a pre-taped segment reading from the controversial tell-all book, Fire and Fury. Let's play a little bit of that. Stand by, take one. He had a long time fear of being poisoned. One reason why he liked to eat at McDonald's. Nobody knew he was coming and the food was safely pre-made. That's it, we've got it, that's the one. You think so? Oh yeah. The Grammy's in the bag? In the bag. So the context there is that uh, James Corden was auditioning people to uh, read the spoken language version of Fire mm -hmm. and Fury, and right before Hillary Clinton, you had Cardi B and, and Khaled, who were amazing and yes. had people buzzing, but this moment you heard the crowd. The crowd went crazy. It was the biggest cheer of the evening, and you know, look, America has a problem with artists a lot of times because they say they go so far to the left, and this was a moment that leaned very, very far left. But the roar in the building was unbelievable. And there were several moments that where politics took the spotlight and took over. I mean, where after Logic performed mm -hmm. and, and he um, was standing there and delivering his words and he uh, dropped a, a quote from the president mm -hmm. that I won't repeat mm -hmm. that brought a roar um, inside the arena. And I will say this, James Corden's best joke of the night, in my opinion, was when he came out and he joked like he was beginning to introduce Barack Obama. The place yeah, almost to, exploded. Yeah, I, I think everybody at home was watching and saying, wait, Barack <laughs> Obama is there. But I got to say Gosh, this. That's one heck of a collab. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nikki Haley, ambassador to the United Nations, uh, tweeted about this, and she you know, was not very happy. And a lot of people on the right, as you point out, sure. Kevin, this was a moment that some in this country perhaps thought was a mixing of politics and music. But the reminder is that rock and roll, pop music in general in this country has always had this mix of politics, from Elvis yeah. singing about In the Ghetto to U2 to The Beatles, John Lennon, 
Oh, everybody has sung about politics. That's what kind of rock music mm -hmm. is about. Sure. Well, rock music, rap music, mm -hmm. every kind of music has always pushed the conversation forward. Right. And if you look at Kendrick Lamar's performance, yes. where it ended with those men in red being shot and falling down, it's just commentary on mm -hmm. what is going on in our world. And by the way, just for a second, I have to say Kendrick Lamar has to be the go-to Grammy performer and the voice of our time. If you go back to his performance in 2014, when he he performed with Imagine Dragons yeah, still to this day. Incredible. It was right. incredible. Yeah. And then remember, he came back in 2016 and did that incredible performance where he was in shackles and then he mm -hmm. went back and went to, and took it back to Africa. And uh, so there were, he just, his performances are moments in time that talk about what's going on in the world. And that's why I thought that there was lots of politics, but that's what music that's is what about. Music is all so about. if you don't rap like music, politics, rock music, right. pop music, the right. blues, everything. So everything. speaking of that, we should probably talk a little about music. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kendrick Lamar, Bruno Mars both did very well, five uh, awards each, I think. Who do you think was snubbed? Well, Bruno was the big winner because he took home all the awards in the big category. But you have to say that right off the bat, it's Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Right. <laughs> Jay-Z. Most Jay. nominations. He sat front and center. He had eight nominations. He was 0 for 8. But I will say this about Jay-Z. I think this weekend was a game changer for him because he was honored at the Clive Davis party, which is the big industry party. And um, then he went on Van Jones' show. And while he was on Van Jones' show, he changed the discourse from where America, and I'm not saying people people who enjoy him or his fans, but America will no longer see him as just a rapper or Beyonce's husband, but they see him as a leader who can deliver mm -hmm. in certain situations. So I thought it was amazing what he said and that he engaged the president. So the Grammys, sure, he didn't get a Grammy. He has plenty of Grammys at home, and he has the biggest trophy of them all, Beyonce, sitting next to him. <laughs> and little Ivy, did you see her yeah. stealing yeah. the show? The yes. two kids, Ivy and Asai. Blue Ivy. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they were great. But, you know, I think also Jay-Z has turned, is helping to turn rap music back towards something that is looking and looking at yourself and being introspective mm -hmm. and getting away from this bling, screaming, cars, mm -hmm. women, houses, things, and saying, let's talk about what's really going on and that's why 444 was an incredible album and it was important so he won anyway right right it's very true that's i mean that's the origins of hip-hop so yeah let's go back really to the roots, right despacito despacito oh yeah i know because I, it's I don't too think popular you gotta be, yeah maybe i mean you would have to have been living under a rock i thought maybe it came out two years ago i couldn't believe that it was eligible for this year because it seems like it's been everywhere forever no one in the world has has not you there everybody's heard this song yeah and so it is um it would have been a great moment Moment, not only for the song and one of the most popular songs in the world, but for Puerto Rico. Yeah. And I, I would have loved to have heard the speeches, especially from Luis Fonzi, about Puerto Rico and what's going on. Um, by the way, go and look up the words of that song. That'll change, that'll change your perspective, but really? Desposito's a great song. What? No, he, he, one heck you of a I, tease. He, no, you and I both spoke to him on the red carpet, and he, and, you know, one of the things he said is exactly that. People shouldn't forget Puerto Rico. And what he really loved about the reaction to this song is that when I told him that my seven-year-old nephew who doesn't know the song lyrics to any other song knows all the words to Despacito yeah. of course doesn't he speak does. Spanish. Right. So. Of course he does. But that's the point. And so I, I, I wish that, you know, there had been a moment for Despacito and for Puerto Rico, but um, don't worry. Next year, when everybody goes down there, when Lin-Manuel Miranda opens up Hamilton in Puerto mm -hmm. Rico, mm -hmm. the eyes of the world will turn back. We, we have to help those people mm -hmm. and, and be cognizant of what's going on there. Kevin Frazier, always great to have you, my friend. Thank, Thank you. you. I love being here with y'all. <laughs>